I became the happiest version of myself I had ever been in a jail cell with absolutely nothing. Yeah. I had no money. I had no material items. I had no freedom even. But see, in that moment, I found freedom within. And that was the most priceless thing I've ever discovered in my life. So if I didn't go through that experience and I had a bunch of money now, I still wouldn't feel the way I wanted to feel. Like the money can't change the way you want to feel. But once you get to a certain point in life where you're working on yourself, you've kind of started to develop self-mastery, you're on a good path, you're achieving goals, you're doing things that you want to do every day, you're passionate about life, like you're on that right path, then when you're earning money, it's going to create more opportunities for you. You're going to have more resources. You can take your family on a trip. You can you know, retire your in-laws or retire your parents. You can buy your wife nice jewelry on Christmas. You can you know, go on this beautiful vacation every year or every month or whatever you want to do. Like You have those options, and it feels really good to have those options. Welcome back to another episode of the Unstoppable Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Michael Crane. We're here in the Unstoppable HQ in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. I got my man, Matt Fleming, with me here. We're going to do some Q&A, you guys. We're going to talk about fitness, nutrition, habits, routines. We're going to put you up on a ton of game because we work with a lot of men who are business owners. They're busy working. They're overwhelmed. They're stressed out. They have kids. They have wives. They have all this stuff going on but they want to be healthy. They want to be fit. They want to figure out how to put all the pieces together. So what we do is we create a blueprint for these guys and show them how to put all the pieces together. Look, I have three kids. I'm married. I have a business. I have employees. I'm traveling. I'm doing all this shit. And I still manage to go to the gym every day. I eat right. I stay below 10% body fat year round. I'm strong. I'm healthy. Like, look, if I let my body deteriorate, I'm going to jeopardize everything that I say I care about. My business my ability to be there with my kids and be present and be active with them, my relationship with my wife. Like when you're not at your best, everything else is compromised. And it's crazy to me how many people don't make their health and fitness their number one priority. Like you have to make you your number one priority in life if you want to get the best results. That doesn't mean you take away time from your family. That doesn't mean you work less. That doesn't mean you stop focusing on your responsibilities. It just means that you make yourself, your routines, your goals a priority so you show up as an even better version of yourself for those things you care about. So what got me wanting to do this podcast today was I've been putting out some pictures recently of a client transformation. Ryan Azar got an amazing transformation working with us. He lost over 90 pounds. He's a HVAC tech. So he works in a, for an HVAC company, which is uh, air conditioning, heating, cooling systems, and he lost 90 pounds and he looks fucking amazing. And he's feeling better than ever. He's going to the gym. He's working out. He's following our nutrition blueprint. And he looks incredible. And he took his before and after. And one of the pictures, someone took the picture of him. And then in the other picture, he's using his own phone. And he's taking a picture in the mirror. So I want you all to go do that right now. Go take a picture of yourself in the mirror using your phone. And then have someone else take a picture of you. What you're going to notice is it's going to be reversed. The picture of you holding your phone, looking in the mirror, it's going to reverse you. It's going to, it's going to show you a mirror image, a reversal of the actual picture. So I had all these people commenting saying our transformation picture was fake because he has tattoos on one arm and in the other picture, they're on the opposite arm. Hey, dumbass, he's using his fucking phone and taking a picture in the mirror. What do you think happened? Do you think he just got the tattoo removed from his arm and we photoshopped his belly shrinking down to nothing? So I love that though because people are actually thinking that we're photoshopping a transformation. It's amazing. And then I posted a, uh, uh, I got an in-body test showing my body fat, my muscle mass. And people are like, oh, you can't have that much muscle mass and walk around at 6% body fat. It's, it's not, it's not going to happen for a natural guy. You must be on trend or some type of testosterone or some type of steroids. And I love it because literally I'm as clean as a fucking, I don't know, but I'm clean. <laughs> I've, never lit I've never taken any performance enhancing uh, stuff such as steroids, such as tests, such as anabol, D-ball, no, nothing like that. But people are accusing me of being on juice. And it's like, look, it, this is what we're doing in the Unstoppable program. Unstoppable 365 is all about elevating the standards to the point where people think we're cheating, we're lying, and we're posting fake pictures. No, you just fucking settled for less, and you guys are shot the fuck out. So when you see someone looking like we do or the transformations we get, you're like, damn, that's not possible. So today we're going to cover a bunch of questions to show you how it's possible and what you need to do in your life right now to lose body fat, build muscle, build your mental strength, right? Develop routines and habits that literally 
will enhance the quality of your life so much that when you wake up, you love who you are and what you're doing. Don't you want that? Don't you want to wake up every day and love the life that you've created and the life that you're living? So we're going to talk about it. And real quick, before Matt or Jared start asking questions, I just want to tell you, I'm going to give you the really quick, simple breakdown. Okay. If you get up early and have 30 minutes alone in solitude to think about your life and you're honest with yourself, and then you go move your body and get your heart rate elevated and push yourself through a difficult workout. Okay. If you're sober and then you eat clean food all day long and you don't overeat, dude, your life will improve drastically. Then if you can drink a gallon of water every day and read 10 pages out of a book that challenges your limiting beliefs or enhances your perspective or adds value to your life, you do that for a year and watch you become. And then in the evening before you go to bed, instead of watching TV, journal about your day or think about your life and ask yourself, is this the life I want? Did I do everything in my power today to be my best self? Could I have done anything better? Tomorrow, what can I do to improve just 1%? You do that right there every day and come talk to me in a year and tell me what your life is like. I guarantee your life will exponentially improve. But see, what do most people do? They don't have a morning routine. They get up and race out the door. They're rushed from the get-go. They're stressed out. Then they're angry in traffic. They spill their fucking coffee on their lap that's full of creamer that's unhealthy for them, that's causing them to be fat and slow and lazy in life. Then they go to a job they hate, a job that they're not passionate about, a job that pays them shit money to be around people that they talk crap about all day long because they don't want to be there. Then they eat Chick-fil-A or McDonald's for lunch. They go home begrudgingly, don't go to the gym. They said they were going to, but they don't, right? Then they have to go pick up their kids or they have to do chores at home and they're all angry and upset about their life and they're bringing that lame energy home. That's like 90% of American men right now. What the fuck happened to you guys? Like what happened to you guys? You're fat, you're dependent on drugs, alcohol, porn, you're just neglecting your health and you say you love your family. You say you want to be your best. Do you think you're going to get a second life? Like this is your one life. So this is a wake up call for you guys. That's my motivational rant for the day. Wake the fuck up. You're made for more. Step it up because we need you. I can't change the world by myself. Me and Matt can't change the world. Just two guys. We need all of you guys to be examples. I need you to raise your kids the right way, to be there for your community, to be there for your wife, to be there in your business as an example of what to be, not what not to be. Okay, so let's get into it. We're going to have Matt answer the first question. Jared, what is it? What's the best time to work out? Ooh, um, I mean, definitely first thing in the morning is going to be my answer. You know what I mean? I love getting up early and just going and crushing a workout. But I think the most important thing is that you get it done. You know, some people can't get up in the morning for whatever reason. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Getting it done is the most important. But I love starting the day off with a win. Getting up early. Like, my routine on a perfect day is 4 a.m., wake up, and I'm in the gym lifting by 5.30. Yeah, so, I mean, the best time to work out is the time that you can consistently get it done. Uh, I do it in the morning because I'm busy, and I'm working all day, and then I have my family to attend to in the evening, and I'm not going to take away from my family time. So I get up earlier, and I work out in the dark, and we come out of the gym, and it's getting light out. We're like, fuck, we just crushed a workout while everyone else is sleeping. So from a, a mental standpoint, it gives you an edge in life. When you go work out in the morning and you didn't want to go to the gym and you're tired and your body's sore, but you go there anyway and you push through a difficult workout, you feel so damn proud of yourself after the fact. And that's how you build real concrete belief and confidence in your ability that's going to carry over into other areas of life. So if you work out in the afternoon or in the evening, that's fine, but make sure you're consistent. If you're not consistent, the number one thing you need to change is your timing. You need to go early. The first thing you should do is go to the gym. If you're missing days, if you're not consistent in the evening, start doing it in the morning. You're going to be more consistent, and it's going to give you a massive level up from a mental standpoint. I will say, though, lifting in the afternoon, I definitely feel stronger. Well, yeah, so if you're going after, like, if you already have muscle built, you've lost a lot of weight, you're really going after aesthetics, lifting in the afternoon is going to be optimal. You want to get up, maybe do a little cardio to get your blood flowing, get some good meals in you. So when you go to the gym, you get a better pump, you feel stronger, like ideally two or three o'clock, maybe four o'clock. I think it just depends on what works best for you. But I mean, I, I like working out twice a day sometimes, you know, cardio in the morning, lifting in the afternoon or vice versa, whatever. Yeah. But getting it done, right? Most <laughs> yeah. Thing. And most people listen to this. You just need to get your ass there. Like your hardest part is just being consistent yeah. over time. Then you can tweak those little variables. Like for me, if I want to get the best physique possible, I'm getting up early and I'm doing cardio right when I wake up and then I'm getting two or three meals in me and then I'm lifting around two or three. That's going to help me to burn body fat down to nothing. 
I'm eating correctly all day long, so I have the right protein, carbs, and fats. I feel strong in the gym, and I'm maximizing, you know, that time in the gym, hypertrophy, which is building muscle. But let's move on to the next question because we got a bunch of good ones. What should I eat to lose weight? I mean, you want to go or you want me to go? I mean, you literally could eat McDonald's every day and lose weight. You could, I wouldn't so, suggest that. No, if you want to be healthy no, and live a long, good life, right? But uh, you, you have to eat in a calorie deficit. So people are always looking for the fad diet. So like, I'm doing a celery juicing cleanse, you know, or I'm only eating meat, carnivore diet, or a keto, just fat and protein, right? It's whatever you can stick to long-term that's going to put you in a deficit. So like, Matt, do you want to explain to them what that means and what specific app or tools we use with our clients to maintain uh, that deficit and help them get in peak physical performance or peak physical shape yeah i mean like the most basic way to explain it with fat loss is you just have to consume less calories than you're going to burn every single day prioritize your protein eat healthy stay in a caloric deficit and you'll lose weight it's that fucking simple you know um yeah so i mean so you can do a test that shows what your uh, basal metabolic rate is and that's literally the amount of calories that you're going to burn every day without doing anything and then there's a, like a little equation. You got to figure out, okay, how many calories am I going to burn every day with my activity level? And then you want to be eating just under that number. So if you burn 2,500 calories a day and your goal is to lose weight, you have to eat less than 2,500 calories. But the problem is most meals people consume are like one to 1,000 calories to 1,500. So your first meal, those fucking egg McMuffins or those pancakes or, or those hash browns and all that ketchup and all that crap, like – you're already almost at your calorie limit for the day. That's why so many people are obese. They don't know how to track their calories and they don't understand how many calories are in the food they're eating. So like, Matt, what do we teach the guys? It's so simple. What app do they use? How do they use it? Well, now we have the, we have the calorie tracker in the app, but before we were using MyFitnessPal, which is great. You know? And there's tons of other great apps out there as well, but um, you know, it's, it's, it makes it super simple. They have all kinds of foods in there. Um, you just type in what you're eating and it gives you the macronutrient breakdown right in the app. Yeah, it's super simple. It's a math equation. And like I tell people all the time, you have an app connected to your bank account, right? And you probably look at it every day because you want to know where your money's going, what bills are being paid, what money's coming in. You don't go months and months without looking at it, right? Okay, so why don't you treat your fucking health the same way? Yeah. Why don't you track your calories? And, and when you get to a point where you know how to use that simple app, and track your calories and you see your body transforming into a physique you've always wanted that you never thought you could have you're like damn why didn't i do this sooner i keep a kitchen scale on top of my microwave in my in my uh or a food scale on top of my microwave in my kitchen i just weigh out everything i eat it's easy Is you that can any- go online too and there's a harris benedict formula or calculator and it will give you a you know you type in your age height Wait, give it the information. It'll give you that breakdown for how many calories you should be consuming each day. What is that called again? Harris Benedict formula, but you Harris know. Benedict formula. But right. there's like you can type in Harris Benedict calculator on Google, and it will take you to a website that allows you to do it yourself. It's super simple. That's super legit. Okay, uh, we got any questions coming in over there, Jared? No, no questions have come in. Okay, let's roll. What's the next one? Okay, next question: How much cardio? So, I mean, this depends on your goals. People think like you have to do cardio to get in the best shape. And in fact, you could do too much cardio and kill your muscle gains. Um, Right now, I'm doing literally no cardio at all because my knee is really messed up and I'm looking into getting that fixed. But I'm at 6% body fat just from lifting every day and, you know, eating the right amount of foods in the right amounts. It's not that hard. But for those of you watching, like it depends or listening, it depends on your goals. If you're really obese and you have a lot of weight to lose, cardio is going to be the best way to just melt that body fat quickly. Stairmaster, running, cycling um, for like an hour a day, especially in the morning on a fast, on a fast, on an empty stomach, will help you start burning through that body fat. But it depends on your goals. Uh, once you shrink those fat cells down to really like nothing, then you can start to see your muscle more and focus on building muscle. So I like cardio too just for the mental benefit though. Like, yeah, you, you get in great shape and, and I like, get lean, but uh, I like it because it gets me just dialed in from a mental standpoint. So that question's like based on your goals. I, I, I do cardio really oft, as often as possible. At least I try to do five days a week. I love what it does for me, my mental state, and it helps me just get that last little bit uh, of body fat off of my body. And, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. So 
two different answers on that one, but I love cardio. Yeah, it just depends on your goals, you know? But if you want to lose a bunch of weight, do cardio every day. And uh, your heart's a muscle, man. You got to work it just like you work everything else. Yeah. yeah. How long should I work out for? I mean, I, I honestly work out 45 minutes to an hour every day. Um, I feel like, you know, if I'm really focused on my workout and I'm not taking too much time between sets, I'm not distracted, that's all I need. Um, and so, yeah, that for me, like, you can even get away with a 30 minute workout. A lot of people are scared to start on a workout program because they think they're going to have to spend hours and hours and hours in the gym. A good 30 minute structured workout where you know exactly what to do, you're monitoring your rest breaks and you have intensity, you're going to be beat after 30 or 45 minutes. So that's my goal every day, uh, unless I'm in the gym with Matt Fleming because he's in there for like three hours. No, I mean, I like to spend time in there, but you, yesterday I only had 50 minutes and I went in there and I just, I got it done, right? You just shorten the rest time. It just depends on how much time you have and what you're looking to achieve. If I'm going heavy, I'll rest longer between sets. You know, it just, I need that rest time. But if I only have 45 minutes or an hour, I'll get just as good of a workout in, in that time frame as well. Um, you know, you can go in there, do your cardio lift and then stretch and do some core work and spend a couple hours in there. I don't think that's a problem either. I spent three hours in the gym before, you know, doing the sauna and everything. It just depends, right, on the yeah. day. Yeah, but for, for people who are scared to go in the gym and they don't want to spend all that time, you don't have to. If you want to, hell yeah, you can. The most important thing is just doing it consistently, right? Not just, yeah. you know, oh, I don't have an hour and a half, so I'm not going to go at all. No, you can do a lot in 20 minutes. Like last night I had a, a quick little break in my schedule. I went and got on the elliptical and just went on like an all-out sprint, and I felt amazing 20 minutes later. Yeah. Cool. Okay, what else we got, Jared? How do I get all my protein every day? So this is actually a question we get asked a lot from the guys that join our program. Because most people, they don't eat enough protein, and they eat way too much carbs and fat. And that's why you see people gaining weight and not looking muscular. Like, you need protein to build muscle, to recover your muscles when you work out. Um, and so, I mean, you have to find foods that are dense in protein, chicken, all animal products, right? Like meat, like so chicken, beef, um, and then eggs, egg whites, um, non-fat Greek yogurt's a good one, and then protein shakes. Yeah. But ideally, you would be getting all your protein every day from actual real whole foods and no protein shakes at all. Um, so <clears throat> that's why you track your calories. When you use MyFitnessPal or an app that shows you exactly what you're consuming every day, then you can start to improve upon it. But if you don't know how much calories you're eating or how much protein, carbs, and fat, you can't change that. So I'd suggest, you know, aiming for high protein meals all throughout the day. Every meal should have protein. That should be the main thing you're focusing on. Um, and then it's just trial and error. Over time, as you track your calories, you're going to start to gain an education around nutrition. And that's when you can actually get results, when you know what the fuck you're doing. You need to educate yourself about nutrition if you want to have results long term. Dude, this is what I do. I go to Costco. I go, last time I bought two big tri-tips, like six pounds of chicken, six pounds of tri-tip, cooked it all up, put it in Tupperware, and then I just, you know, weigh it out as I consume it. I have really good protein sources all throughout the week. Egg whites, eggs for breakfast. Um, and then I even do, like, get the, the high-quality fresh-caught tuna, canned tuna. Some people think it's gross, but I, I don't mind it at all. And then vegetables. It's just... I pick a few things I like to eat, and I just eat the same thing over and over again. I eat for purpose, not for pleasure. Yeah, and you have to have a plan, like Matt said. Like, he has food ready at home right now that he can eat that is yeah. going to help him achieve his results. So, like, if you're not planning what you're going to eat beforehand, you're probably going to make a bad decision or not have the right food near you to reach your goals. Yeah. I always have food at home, like Matt said, the right protein sources, egg whites in the fridge, uh, prep chicken, prep tri-tip. Dude, you could even drink a carton of egg whites. It's 50 grams of protein. You know, your farts will smell really bad, and your wife will probably <laughs> no, get pissed at you and make you sleep on the couch. Stop drinking them for that reason. But, <laughs> right, when you're on the go and you want something to, to boost your protein intake up, those egg whites are going to do it for you. Yeah, yeah. And then a tub of non-fat Greek yogurt. You know, you put a little of the uh, Crystal Light packet in or some flavored packet that has no calories. That one big tub is 90 grams of protein. So you can even break it up into a couple different servings, but it tastes like Go-Gurt or Yoplait, and it's, there's no sugar, very little sugar, very little carbs. It's all protein. That's like my dessert right there is I do one cup of Greek nonfat yogurt, which is 18 grams of protein, one scoop of pro, pro zine or pro Yeah, some type of protein. 34 grams in there, a cup of blueberries, and maybe a banana. 
if I want to get real fancy, I'll, I'll do like a teaspoon of almond butter on top or some honey. And it tastes, you know, it tastes yeah, it, it does. It tastes like a, a acai bowl. Kind yeah. Kind of. But it's, it's majority of its protein and it's, it's and conducive to the gains, man. It's conducive yeah, yeah. to the physique you want. Blueberries, man. It's the, the best yeah. fruit you can eat. And a lot of the stuff we're talking about, it's all mindset. Most people just eat for pleasure. Uh, they don't have impulse control. They, they're they a slave to their cravings. So a lot of this stuff you can't even implement with the wrong mindset. You have to really take this seriously because the way you eat is going to affect your mental health, your longevity, uh, just your overall quality of life. I'm going to tell you something. I, I, uh, I relapsed last Sunday. I, uh, I had a cinnamon roll. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we went to Pismo, and uh, I – and we went by Old West Cinnamon Rolls. And um, I honestly, I think I've been there like two times in my life. And I grew up in that area. So we grabbed some cinnamon rolls and I had two of them. And I felt like shit the next day. So. Yeah, if you eat clean and then you start having a bunch of sugar, you literally will feel hungover. And I used to do that too, especially when I was training for an Ironman or an ultra marathon. I would use that as an excuse to just eat whatever I wanted. And although I was working out every day and I was a beast, I still wasn't 100% all in with my diet. Yeah. And I didn't like feeling... Like I was a slave to my cravings. I hated at night when I was trying to go to bed or like an hour before bed and I'd be thinking about dessert. <laughs> and then the other part of me would be like, no, you don't need it. And then the other part of me would be like, yeah, you do. And I was just negotiating back and forth with myself. And I wasn't in control of my actions. My, you know, my mind was elsewhere. Like I wasn't present in the moment. And I hated that. So I literally two years ago said I'm never eating dessert ever again. And I haven't since and I never will because I've eaten enough fucking dessert in my life. I don't need cake and cookies and donuts and cinnamon rolls. I don't need that shit. I had enough. I had enough. I never have to eat it again, and I never will. And since I've eradicated those cravings and removed that option from my life, I'm happier. I don't battle with myself internally. I'm not a slave to my cravings like most people, and I feel way better. I have better energy, better health, and I can be a better example to people too who literally don't have control over what they eat, and they, they want that little moment of pleasure, but they're going to just – neglect their health and their physique for the rest of their life so well that's you know, what i don't get too is like people be like oh I, i'm still staying in a deficit and i'm eating you know i'm able to eat this like but why do you want to eat that shit like, i mean if it, you yeah. dude if you want it and it's not affecting you then like do it but that's like the guy who says he just drinks sometimes and then yeah. come to find out he drinks more than he says he does and he's hung over and he missed his son's soccer practice or he missed his workout or like he went to work monday morning feeling like shit because sunday was football and he drank with his buddies like People will mitigate it. You know what I mean? Like they'll say it's not that big of a deal because they do it sometimes. Yeah. But in all actuality, you're not really in control of your life and how you feel. If you need that stuff or you're not in control and you're doing it just sometimes, it's probably still more of an issue than you want to let on. Just because you're not putting heroin in your arm and you're not sleeping on a park bench doesn't mean it's not having an effect over your mental health and the quality of your life. Well, coming from someone that like, you know, I've done a lot of drugs. I've had that addictive personality. Whenever I eat those sugary foods and those... I get that same hit, that same mm -hmm. dopamine hit. Well, yeah, it's a dopamine. And I can't stop. Yeah. I'm gonna, that's why I don't keep that stuff in the house because yeah. when I start eating foods like that, I don't quit. Dude, don't that's, why, that. that's why I stopped. I wouldn't just go eat a couple of cookies. Yeah. I'd eat the whole box of Chips Ahoy. Yeah. No. I'd eat the whole box of uh, Cocoa Krispies. Yeah. I'd eat the whole box of cinnamon rolls. And I was like, dude, I'm just being a drug addict with food. I had a friend bake right. me a cake. Thank you, Sam, for the amazing cake. She made me this really cool <laughs> cake for my birthday. It was a giant dumbbell. And we ate half of it at the restaurant, and then I had the other half in my fridge. And every night at like two in the morning, I was waking up half asleep. I didn't even remember doing it, dude. I oh was, damn! I was eating it with my hand. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, that's the thing is like food is the most widely abused substance in modern countries, especially America. Forty percent of Americans are fat. None of you guys have it's abs, to even <laughs> right? One in twenty-five thousand men have abs. You can actually see. It's because you're abusing food and you're eating the wrong food. Um, you know, if you eat the right food, even in large amounts, you'll still stay relatively lean and healthy. Absolutely. Like, it's really hard to overeat chicken and baked potato. Well, and you'll right? realize how many calories are in the shitty well, food. Well, the craving shuts off. You don't yeah. crave that shit. Once you have enough of rice or chicken or steak, like, you don't want more. You're full. But yeah. when you're eating that processed food, yeah. there's that switch doesn't turn on. You're like, more, and more, and more, and more. Well, that's one of the biggest things we get from guys in the coaching program. They're like, man, I can't even hit my calories now that you yeah. know, we give them a meal plan or some food. Because they're eating clean food. Yeah, because they're eating It's clean hard food. to eat a lot of good sources of food. Go to, like, the gas station, like, those little coffee cakes they have. They're, like, that big. They're, like, 500 calories. And, yeah. You know, you could eat, I could eat 10 of those. Easy. No problem. Yeah. I wouldn't, but I could.
I can put down some food. Oh, I, yeah. What's <laughs> Three, the next, four by four. What's the next question? <laughs> okay, next question. Habits to cut out if you want to improve your life. Porn, dude, number one. I mean, shit. Anything that right now you're feeling guilty about or you know in your mind you shouldn't do. Yeah. Like, your conscience tells you the truth. Yeah. Most people just don't listen, right? But we see a lot of the same symptoms. Like, the guys that reach out for help, there's, like, five things that they're abusing. Food, and not all of them. Maybe it might be one or two. But they're doing these things to numb them from feeling the truth about their life. Like, when you're unhappy with who you are, either you're going to do something to change or you're going to try to numb that feeling. Most people choose to numb that feeling because maybe they don't know what to do. It's hard. They don't have support. They don't have the right guidance. They're not in the right community. So a lot of it is just getting around the right people that are doing the shit that you want to do. And then when you have a plan to follow, it's like night and day. But uh, most guys that aren't living the life that they want, they're watching way too much porn. Uh, they're drinking too much. They're taking pills. They got their little fucking vape pen in their mouth all the time. Um, they're on their phones all the time, scrolling on social media and wasting their lives. Um, and they're eating a bunch of bad food. They're eating for pleasure over purpose. So like all of those things, if you're doing any of them, you cut them out of your life, and I promise you your life's going to get a million times better. But you have to replace the bad habits with positive habits. So instead of sleeping in and hitting snooze, get up early. Um, instead of getting on your phone right away, read a book or write in a journal or meditate or just sit there in silence and think about your life and where you're going and what you're doing. Then instead of abusing your body, take care of your body. Work out, eat good food, drink water, drink electrolytes. Like you guys know what to do. Yeah, it's pretty. You fucking know what to do. People just aren't doing it because they think they have more time. They don't understand what's at stake for them. And they're going to suffer in the end. I promise you that. So the reason we push Unstoppable 365 so hard and the reason we're growing so fast is because people understand our message. We're here to like literally save you guys from yourselves. I was able to save myself from myself. God intervened in my life and sent me to prison and put me in a concrete box where I couldn't do those things that I was doing. I couldn't waste my life. I couldn't abuse myself any longer. I couldn't use drugs. I couldn't eat bad food. I couldn't drink. I couldn't do all the stuff I was doing. I couldn't get around the toxic people and family members that I was around. So I was removed from society. That's the extent I had to go to to change. And a lot of people, they'll never change because they don't have that type of intervention in their life. So we're on social media every day. We're reaching out to guys every day because we know that if we can get them close to us, we can get them in our community with the other men who are changing and we can get them on a good path, a good blueprint to follow, their whole lives will be different. And they'll be better men for their families, better men for their wives, and they'll be happy men. And those are the guys that we want to lead our society and to be the examples, not these deadbeats, not these wannabe gangsters, not these lame fucking rappers. Like, that's not life. That's not reality. So for me, it's way personal, and it goes much deeper than just this fitness and nutrition talk, but oftentimes this is the gateway to real transformation. Like, a guy wants to lose weight and be happier and be sober and be all these things. Well, the first step is, like, teaching them the basics that we're talking about right here. Matt should answer that one. Matt gets stressed out I sometimes. I get stressed out all the time. I mean, honestly, my go-to is just cardio. I just do some intense cardio, and I never feel stressed out after that. But, no, I mean, I think journaling, writing about it, putting your thoughts in, on feelings, having some good people in your life that you're able to talk to about things, I think is really key. And, you know, just letting, recognizing that it is a feeling, and it, you just have to let it go, right? Like Yeah. That, that's the hard part. Yeah, sometimes. it is the hardest part. Sometimes it feels impossible, and you're like, I want to let this feeling go, but I can't. And you have to change your internal state. That's well, yeah, why the, the exercise is so important. Yeah. It literally elevates you beyond that feeling. But once you've been through it enough times and you recognize, okay, this is just another wave of emotions that I'm ha having right now. Like, I know I'm going to get through this. I know I'm going to feel better eventually. Yeah, and it's self-talk. But then for a lot of people, when they get stressed out, they stress eat, they drink. Yeah. They just like suppress it and stay workout. angry. Yeah. You know what I mean? But no, literally the number one thing that'll that'll change your life and the number one thing that you should do when you're feeling overwhelmed, stressed out, anxious is go move your body. Yeah. You go sweat, you move your body, you run, you lift weights, you do something physical like that and you literally elevate beyond that emotional state. And I, I'm telling you, within 15, 20, 30 minutes, you're going to feel way different. And you're like, damn, like 
okay, I'm good now. Well, there's even science behind it. When you contract your muscles, you secrete hormones in your bloodstream that doctors and scientists have nicknamed hope molecules. When those hope molecules get to your brain, it makes you resilient against depression, uh, stress, and anxiety. Like, we all know that when we work out, we feel better, right? But now there's, like, scientific proof yeah. to back it up. And, I mean, it's, like, a pretty old study. It's like No, that's so old. cool. And it's true. I mean, we, we all know when you work out and you're doing that stuff, you feel way better. But it's cool, like, when the numbers fit. You know? Yeah, when you have, like, data to back yeah, it up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the only thing other than working out that <laughs> can really shift your energy in the moment, for me, other than, like, a big line of cocaine, which I don't do anymore, yeah. or a, a bottle of Jack Daniels, because we know where that goes, right? Like... It works in the moment, but then it just makes everything worse. I think um, getting out in nature, too. That, well, out in nature or the ice bath. The ice bath. So, you know, if I come home and I've had a long day and there's just a lot of shit going on, I feel overwhelmed, I feel the stress building up inside of me, I'll go right to the ice bath before I greet my wife and kids, and it instantly shifts my energy. Yeah. Like, I get out of there feeling energetic, positive, just grateful, and, like, all that stress, it just it – just, it doesn't melt away. Maybe it, it froze. I don't know. But it fucking dissipates, you know? Yeah. And uh, looking for things like that in your life that you could turn to in moments when you need them is a part of developing self-mastery. Because self-mastery is control of your emotional state, obviously control of your thoughts and your daily actions. Most people don't have control over their thoughts. They don't have control over how they feel. They do have control of their actions, but they choose the wrong actions or they don't take the right actions. So... You need to have things that you can turn to in those moments of stress, anxiousness, cravings, just a bad mood that will elevate you. That's literally going to change your entire world because now you have recourse to those moments. And most people, I think, they just think it's going to pass or they just begrudgingly wait till it passes. And in the midst of that, you're wasting your life. You're going to be irritable. You might take it out on someone you love. You're not feeling the way you want to feel. So wouldn't you rather develop? Uh, a tool, uh, an action, a recourse in those moments that can instantly get you back on track to feeling how you want to feel. Like we all would. Um, and you know, mainstream media and people like try to push pills on you. What else? They'll try to say like, Oh, have a drink or like smoke some weed. Um, like, no, fuck that. All that does. It's just a band aid. It doesn't actually fix the issue. Like it doesn't work long term. You have to develop long term remedies to these issues. If you want to live the best life. Jared, what's next? How to improve the quality of your relationships. Well, that's a good one. Um, it's, I mean, it's literally what I just said. Improve yourself. Create somebody that you love when you look in the mirror that you're proud of, that you fucking love, that you know is all in in life. What do you think is going to happen when you're around other people? Do you think you're going to be grumpy and irritable? No, you're going to be happy. You're going to be more outgoing. You're going to be more pleasant to be around. So I'm specifically talking to those of you who have kids, okay, and you have a, a significant other, a spouse. And you have maybe team members or maybe you own a business or just you're around people consistently. Let me ask you this. Do you want to be a jerk? Do you want to be, you know, irritable? Do you want to be less pleasant or do you want to be fun, exciting, happy, positive? So that when you get around those people, you make their life better rather than worse. Like I know what you would all answer. You'd all answer that you want to make their lives better, that you want to be happier, that you want to have better energy. But how many of you are actually living your life? in preparation for those moments to show up as that person. Most of you aren't. Most of you are living your life unaware of how your daily actions are affecting you and how that energy is then transferred to other people. Like the lamest thing in my eyes is a father who is not giving their children the best life possible and a father who's not giving his wife and children the best version of himself possible. Like you don't need a mansion, a yacht, a billion dollars to give your wife and kids the best life. That's not what I'm talking about. You need to create your best self so you give them all the love, all the energy that you feel inside of you that you cultivated you can then transfer it to them. And you'll see it in their face, man. You'll see that look in, your, in their eyes. They'll always want to be around you. Dad's fun. Dad's loving. Dad's the best. They'll talk about you to their friends. They'll tell other parents about you. Yeah, my, you know what my son Preston says? He goes, my dad's stronger than the Hulk. He tells his uncle Andy, my dad's stronger than you, Andy, right? He never says, oh, you know, my dad's fat. My dad's not fast. My dad's not fun. My dad's mean. Kids are going to tell you the truth. You want to know the truth about who you really are? Go ask your fucking kids. Okay? They're going to tell you the truth. It might break your heart, but guess what? Then you have a chance to change. Much for you. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. Um, but if I was on my deathbed and someone asked me, like, hey, you can only say one word, just money by happiness, I'd say no because I became the happiest version of myself I had ever been in a jail cell with absolutely nothing. Yeah. I had no money. I had no material items. I had no freedom even. 
But see, in that moment, I found freedom within, and that was the most priceless thing I've ever discovered in my life. So if I didn't go through that experience and I had a bunch of money now, I still wouldn't feel the way I wanted to feel. Like the money can't change the way you want to feel. But once you get to a certain point in life where you're working on yourself, you've kind of started to develop self-mastery, you're on a good path, you're achieving goals, you're doing things that you want to do every day, you're passionate about life, like you're on that right path, then when you're earning money, it's going to create more opportunities for you. You're going to have more resources. You can take your family on a trip. You can you know, retire your in-laws or retire your parents. You can buy your wife nice jewelry on Christmas. You can you know, go on this beautiful vacation every year or every month or whatever you want to do. Like You have those options, and it feels really good to have those options. But if I could choose right now inner peace that I've found with no money or no material items or a billion dollars, I would never choose the money over the inner peace I've discovered. If you told me right now I could have a billion dollars, but I couldn't work out or I couldn't walk, right? Or I couldn't like do the things that naturally bring me joy and love in my life. I would never choose the money. Like you could say right now, Sean, I'll give you a hundred billion dollars, but you can never work out again in your life. I wouldn't fucking choose it. Are you kidding me? And what sit here and just be miserable and then want to go do heroin and drink and do all this stuff. Cause look at happiness is created from within. When I work out, when I push myself to the limits, when I'm testing myself and challenging myself, I feel proud of myself because of that. And when you feel proud of yourself and you do that consistently over time, you start to love who you are. That's the feeling everyone else in the, everyone in the world is after that feeling. They don't all know how to get it. And they're searching all these different places. They're searching in relationships. You know, they're searching in their career, chasing money, thinking that new car will do it, but it doesn't. It's you getting to a place where you're really proud of who you are. You love who you are. And look, if you're overweight, but you have a bunch of money and in your heart, you know, you don't want to be that overweight, fat fucking slob. You're never going to be happy. Um, If you have a bunch of money, but you know, you want to be a good dad, but you're not present at home. You're not going to have that inner peace that you really want. Like you have to live in alignment with that truth in your heart and you create inner peace. And that's where happiness stems from. If you can get that down, then you go out and make a bunch of money. Hell yeah. You're going to have a badass life. Like, Watch me in a couple years. We're going to have the unstoppable jet flying all over the place. I'm going to be buying mansions all over for my family. I'm going to take care of everybody. I had the whole vision of what I'm going to do. I've had it since the beginning. We're just getting started. And yes, it requires money. It requires results. It requires success. We're going to live the ultimate life. But this wouldn't be possible if I didn't figure this out and I didn't master myself first. Look, you guys, I'm on a mission to change the world but I can't do it by myself. I need you to step up and lead by example. And I need you to subscribe and share this podcast episode with everybody that you know that needs to be inspired to level up in their lives. Like I said, I'm on a mission to change the world, but I can't do it alone. I need you. Let's do it together.